And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. Of course, this week, all the chatter was about the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. And late in the week, Friday afternoon, a deal was struck based upon a prior deal made by Jeff Flake and a couple of the Democrats to extend the process a little bit by having an additional FBI investigation of the charges at least of Ms. Ford, maybe of others, limited in scope, limited in duration. But let me say this, I don't believe that this ends it. This may be the old theory of if you give the mouse a cookie, you'll want a glass of milk. I can almost guarantee that there's going to be more. If it's not additional assertions by Michael Avenatti or somebody of his ilk, it's going to be that Senate Democrats saying, well, we don't have enough. Now we have this FBI investigation, but they don't come to conclusions, so we need to bring in these witnesses and cross-examine them personally ad infinitum. I mean, this is, at this point, a matter of vote counting and a matter of whether or not the Democrats can, in effect, run out the clock, which has been their plan all along. I mean, there's nothing insidious about that. That was their political game plan. They figured that if they could get it to the November elections, take control of the Senate, they could block any future appointment on the part of President Trump. After all that testimony last week, as difficult as it was for everybody to watch, regardless of your point of view, were any minds really changed or were any made up? I mean, most people had announced their position. They were locked in. It didn't matter what Ms. Ford said. It didn't matter what Judge Kavanaugh said. They were going to go the direction they had already said. So there's lots yet to come. And I think anybody, myself included, that's making predictions at this juncture about what will happen is foolhardy. We'll have to live to eat our words. I put the over under at 53 a while back. I'll dial it down to 52. I still do believe that Judge Kavanaugh will be confirmed, but it's a lot less certain today than it was just a little time ago. And pray for our country. We've been through an awful lot here. So on to more pleasant news, namely the congressional midterms. And 23 is the key number for the Democrats. They have to flip 23 seats in order to take control of the Congress. Historically, anyway, that's not a terribly difficult thing to do because the first midterm of any administration is tough. Typically, 32 seats are lost. If you do the simple math, more than enough to take control for the Democrats come January. But look at the individual seats, because if there isn't a blue wave, I don't think there's going to be a red one, but if there isn't a blue wave, then these battles are going to be fought out district by district all across the landscape. And most of the roads to 23 lead through my home state of Pennsylvania. So I just want to quickly say the Republicans are likely to lose some seats in Pennsylvania for a couple of reasons. First, more than a third of our congressional delegation is not coming back. Open seats are obviously the place where opportunities exist for either party in any situation. But our state Supreme Court judicially mattered the congressional seats at the beginning of the year, so they're very different than they were before. So you've got a couple of seats in the collar counties around Philadelphia that are in very, very difficult situations for the Republicans right now, namely the seat that was held by Pat Meehan, who resigned, and by Ryan Costello, who made an untimely announcement about his resignation, uh, or not resignation, his retirement. And so those two seats look to be very difficult. The other one that's tough is the Charlie Dent seat up in the Lehigh Valley. Had the Democrats nominated a more moderate candidate, I think they would have taken that with relative ease. It's still probably a leaning Democrat seat at this point. The other one that the Democrats thought they could take was the first congressional district in Bucks County held by freshman Brian Fitzpatrick. I think he will make it through. On the other side of the state, you've got a situation where you've got two incumbent members uh, facing each other, pitted against each other in the fall because of the change of districts that the Supreme Court made, namely Keith Rothfuss and Connor Lamb. The Connor Lamb's star power left over from his victory in the special election, which captured so much national attention, makes it an awfully tough hill for Keith Rothfuss to climb. He's been a very, very solid member of Congress, a good member of Congress, but he's got a tough battle. The Democrats also think they can take seats like Congressman Kelly's up in the northwest part of the state. I think that's a huge stretch. Likewise, one here in the mid-state where I happen to live with Scott Perry. They've got a Lutheran pastor running against him. George Soros' money is in here. Tom Steyer's money is in here. Michael Bloomsburg's money is in here. A lot of outside interests are weighing in. But I think ultimately Scott Perry will win that seat, but by a much 
smaller margin than he's used to. His previous district was a plus 22 or so for President Trump. The one he's in now, maybe a plus four or five. So it's a very different constituency and a very different type of campaign because he's never really been challenged. This is his first really, really tough race since going to Congress. But I think he survived. So how many seats the Democrats can pick up in Pennsylvania may well be the tail of the tape come January when control of the House is up for grabs. Finally, something we'd really like to talk about, and I'm going to talk about next week, is baseball, because we're heading into the playoff time. And on this day, September 28th, in 1941, Ted Williams became the last player to bat 400. What's really remarkable about that is that he took to the game with a doubleheader with a 400 batting average. And the manager said to him, do you really want to play? Because we can preserve your 400 batting average. The first guy in 30 years at that point to have done it, and the only one in 77 since. He said, no, I'm playing. And he went out and went six for nine, raising his average to 406. Remarkable. That's balls, uh, baseballs, just so we're clear. 19 years later, Ted Williams played his last game. And as you may know, homered in his last plate appearance. Pretty remarkable career. And for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.